Well, I'm an electrical engineer of education, mm -hmm. educated here at uh, DTEC. Okay. Then I've been uh, 10 years in the industry, working with the energy companies. And then I got employed here at DTU as a professor and head of uh, Center for Electric Power and Energy. If we talk about decentralized energy, mm. um, it's already happening, actually. Can you give me an example yeah. for that? Uh, actually, I can, I can use uh, myself as an uh, example. I'm actually one of the uh, stakeholders, not as part of my job here as DTU, but actually as a private person. I own a 600 kilowatt wind turbine, selling electricity on the electricity market in competition with the uh, conventional uh, stakeholders. So what would you tell the conventional players if they told you they're afraid of all these developments you're describing? We have seen this, uh, this conventional generation being uh, squeezed out by the incoming uh, decentralized generation and renewable uh, energy sources. Uh, actually, the capacity, installed capacity has been uh, half the last 10 years or so. And the role are shifting. They are playing new role in the system, providing much more flexibility rather than just energy. And the role of uh, ensuring the stability uh, and reliability of the system. Which business cases do you see for uh, decentralized energy. With a smartphone you have a very nice uh, platform where uh, third parties can come and develop new new apps and you see completely new businesses developing and if we can have the same developed for the energy system I think we'll see a lot of new stakeholders taking benefit of uh, such new uh, new opportunities. Is that also something where even things like social networks might come into play? I think a lot of the solutions in the future grid will be the IT solutions. So young people will do a lot of new things with IT technology and that will definitely impact the, uh, the way the system is operated and the business models of the conventional payers. And which trends do you see in decentralized energy? We need to consider more coherent uh, energy system, not only electricity, but also heating systems, cooling systems, gas system, transport system, uh, to uh, solve the challenges we have with balancing and manage a system with a lot of stochastic generation injected into the electricity system. I think we'll in the future see more decentralized generation, and we'll see that the uh, decentralized uh, generation is uh, closer interlinked into the uh, overall system and interact across the different uh, energy carriers. What would be the main challenges for a decentralized energy system? One of the big challenges with decentralized energy system is to have a, a good integration into the uh, energy system. It's uh, widespread, it's uh, more difficult than to control uh, compared to uh, large centralized uh, units where the costs are not so important. And it also means huge amounts of data. What does it mean like in terms of cloud computing, for instance? I think we'll see different solutions in the future. Some uh, local s solutions where data is contained within the uh, business and perhaps other solutions where we have uh, more centralized uh, solutions where, uh, for instance, uh, fleet management, management systems for electric vehicles uh, where you have uh, central uh, information about uh, the cars and their position and their charging and, and so on. Decentralized energy is happening globally. What does that mean, for instance, for developing countries? A lot of the technology is also very useful in developing countries, uh, perhaps areas where we do not even have electricity today. Uh, they need some, some solutions without a strong uh, transmission uh, system. So you need, they need local, more or less self-sustained solutions. And a lot of the technology that we develop within decentralized generation and smart grids is about local distributed solutions.